All right, how's it going everyone? So I've been kind of trying to learn more about the suspense um, component that's built into React. I've used this before by using it for lazy loaded, loaded components, um, but I just kind of postponed learning more about it because I just haven't seen a use case or a need for it yet. Um, and this new RFC for the use hook kind of got me into a rabbit hole of like learning more about suspense because use, uh, the proposed use solution basically utilizes suspense to be able to resolve and await on promises in your components. So I wanted to just kind of make sure I'm, you know, up to speed on some of this stuff. So I just started reading through this article. I really didn't spend too much time reading through it. I'm kind of playing around with the code, making sure I kind of understand what's going on. Uh, so definitely I'll put the link in the article and read through it if you want to get a better understanding. I think this guy did a pretty good job at explaining this stuff. But let's just kind of walk through like what Suspense does. So basically, if you look at the component tree here, when this app first loads, it's going to render out a Suspense component and it shows a loading state while the, the nested components of the suspense, so in this case, my component, has a, a promise that it's waiting for it to be fulfilled slash rejected. Okay, so that's how this works. And let me show you the code real quick. If you go to my app.tsx, you'll notice there's a suspense component that has a fallback prop. And by default, um, if the component here is still like in a sense loading. It gives you a, the ability to display like a loading state, okay? So the interesting part of how suspense works is that how does it know when to show this fallback? And it turns out it's whenever your component throws a promise. And again, like correct me if I'm wrong with anything, but let me just kind of show you real quick. If I were to just go ahead and make this component always resolve, or sorry, always throw a promise that resolves to test, then this is always going to be stuck as loading. Okay, so it's a little weird because typically when you're coding with JavaScript, you throw errors, you don't throw promises. And it doesn't matter if it's resolved or rejected. Whatever you throw, it seems like that is what triggers the loading state. So that's kind of important to understand like how the suspense component actually knows when to show that loading state. So if you read through the article a little bit, he'll talk about how you can basically take a promise like this. So he's doing a promise that, uh, well, actually yeah, this is my code. I'm doing a promise that resolved after one second. And in the meantime, it just sits there waiting uh, in a pending state. And then when it's fulfilled, it's going to return an array of these names. But in the article, he talks about wrapping this promise here. So when I call get people, I get a promise. And I'm taking that promise and passing it to wrap promise. All right, so let's look at the wrap promise uh, function real quick. And so I'm still trying to wrap my head around what's going on here, but basically he seems like he's keeping track of some a variable status, right? And when the promise is passed in, he basically chains on a then and also a catch. So when the then resolves, he changes the status to success and he keeps track of the response. And when the status rejects, he sets the status to error, and then he sets the error for a response. And um, there's some stuff here, I'll get to that in a second, but basically this helper takes a promise and returns a method called read that you can call on the actual wrap promise. And when you call this read method, it's going to check what the current status is, which again is like kind of a cached up here in, in a variable. And if it's pending, um, what happens is, in fact, I'm not really even sure why he's doing this. Handler status, status will either be pending, success, or error. Pending, oh, he doesn't have success, right? So he has default. So I don't know why he did that, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's important. But basically, if you call status and the key that you pass in just doesn't exist, it's going to basically fall back on default. So for, for whatever reason, if it's success, he falls back on a default. But if it's pending or error, which is these two states, then he returns pending or error, which to both of these, if the promise is pending, we throw a new promise. Or in this case, this isn't a new promise. This is just the promise that has a status of success. So in this case, if the status is pending, he throws like the, the original promise. And if the status is error, he throws a response. And I believe there's something called an error boundary, which this stuff might be used for. I'd have to go and try to figure that out. But basically what happens is in the component, you call read, this thing is either going to throw a promise like we did here. And that promise can either be resolved or rejected, or it's going to just return the value. In this case, it's gonna be an array. 
So that's how his little wrapping promise thing works. To basically allow us to do some type of, uh, I, I guess it's kind of like a waiting on a promise inside your React code. Instead of having to use like our use effect, use effect or something like that. I mean, to be honest with you, all this stuff just seems like a, a pretty convoluted way to just have it go to a fallback state. I think there's much better ways you can do it with like React query and have like an is loading boolean. But I think suspense really comes into play with like server side rendering and lower level libraries. Just correct me if I'm wrong, because obviously I'm a noob at React and you guys should know that by now from the videos I publish. But um, let's just go ahead and look at, I don't know why I have that method. So I do want to kind of test a theory about uh, the error boundary. So I think there's another component called like error boundary. So I'm not too sure. I mean, I think you to do error boundaries, you actually have to like do some more craziness. Um, let's see if I can actually find it in the React components. Does he talk about error boundaries here? The logic used by suspense is literally the opposite of error boundary. So error boundary with hooks. I don't know if it's possible. You might actually have to use like a, a class component. Yeah, it looks like this guy's saying you have to use uh, class components instead of hooks. So that kind of sucks, but I mean, there's a package here. So I wanted to just test the theory real quick and I'm gonna install this. Um, let's just go ahead and install this real quick. And like always, I mean, like you guys have seen my videos, like I don't really prepare for my videos. I just play around with code and kind of explain what the heck I'm, I'm talking about in the code itself. But if I wanted to, for example, wait on the error that would potentially come back from this read thing, um, like if this thing called reject instead, and you know, were to say like something bad happened, how would you actually have your suspense handle that? Or how would you have your application handle that? So let's just rename this to reject. And after one second, it should reject that promise. And let's just go ahead and wrap all of our code. Like so. Let's just go ahead and take this component. And I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just delete this because I don't need it. Um, I'm not sure what this on reset thing is doing. Like reset the state of your app so the error doesn't happen again. I don't think we really care about that, honestly. But... There's basically another fallback that we could display if something were to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to print out the error. In fact, I think it prints out here, error message. And the reset error boundary, I'm gonna delete. So let's see if this assumption is correct. Like basically if your component that's nested inside of suspense were to reject a promise, then that'll bubble up to your error boundary and that'll show whatever fallback. Now again, this error boundary, this is a third party library. You can do this custom with React class components, but it's always easier just to find a third-party library that does some of this stuff. So let's see if this works. Now I'm gonna refresh the page and it prints out something went wrong, but why did this thing crash? Uncaught something bad happened. So what I'm actually gonna do instead is I'm just gonna go ahead and put props here. I'm gonna console log props and I wanna see what props is equal to. And it looks like it is a object that has an error on it. So we should potentially be able to render that out. And I think it's just called error here. So let's just go ahead and destruct, or, destruct error here. Like that. And I think this will work fine now. All right, there it is. Something bad happened. Now, I don't know why uh, it's printing these things out. I think I have some extra console logs sitting around maybe. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure why wrap promise line 21 is printing out anything. Maybe it's just the way my dev tools are set up to just log any type of errors. Well, actually, I, I guess this is just how React kind of works, right? So this thing is throwing an error and the error boundary is able to basically catch it and prevent your entire app from crashing. So I think this is actually how it's supposed to work. It's just kind of strange, right? So instead of saying something bad happened, I could basically say like GG here. And that should also just print out. So that's kind of like my understanding so far of like reading through a little bit of this article and trying to understand like how suspense works and how error boundaries work. But feel free to in the comments, like let me know um, if I've explained anything incorrectly or if I've kind of misled anyone. Because again, most of the people, some of the people who watch my videos, like those are the real experts in React. And I'm just kind of showing you and learning in public just so that people realize that, I mean, even though I've been coding it for a while, learning some of this stuff is still 
it takes time, right? You have to actually sit down and dedicate time to learn this stuff. And sometimes when you've, you know, spend eight hours a day trying to actually implement business logic and features for your application, you don't necessarily find too much value in learning something that you haven't actually used yet. But finally, just trying to uh, learn more about it. And I hope my explanations have helped you learn about it as well. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, bell icon, you know, and then also feel free to join my discord if you want to talk to me directly, or if you just want to find a place where you can kind of ask for help and talk with other developers who might be learning these same things along the way. Have a good day and happy coding.